What's up, Internet? We are back with more SMS Advanced Mega Cartridge uh, Game Gear SMS thingamabob with 100 games on it. Uh, last time we accidentally did six games, but to be fair, one of those games didn't really work, so I didn't count it. Uh, and that was, of course, Operation Wolf, which is a light gun game that didn't exactly work terribly well. We played some uh, Fantasy Star. Now we get to play Power Strike, and I'm a big fan of this because this is a compile shooter. And I am a big fan of uh, their Genesis work in Musha, so I'm hoping this is going to be kind of similar. I'm also familiar with uh, Xanak, uh, Gunak, and uh, Blazing Lasers. I'm not good at these games, but I love them. I think Musha's like the best shmup ever, though. So, if we get more Musha, that would be good. I... Who owns the rights to compile now? I uh, Pardon me, I'll say it's Sega, but I'm not sure that's the case. Okay, so... That's what that gun is. That's the wave beam, apparently. There was actually a direct sequel to this. I believe it was only available in Japan, too, which is kind of a shame. Whoa, that's some slowdown. What we got? We got number four. Number four is shield powers. That's some sound effects I recognize from... What was it? Uh, Guardian Legend. But it's, uh, of course, it's all the same people. And uh, what you're getting here is a relatively fast shooter. <laughs> I'm not super good at it. I think it's it's not like Don Maku or anything. It's not like overly complicated. Got lots of room to avoid things, but I'm, I'm just awful at shooters. But I love them. It does have like the power collection that I'm familiar with from Musha, where you collect all these little pill things that ultimately give you better power-ups and like upgrade your current ones. Or in Musha's case, give you like controllable, um, I don't want to say bits, but uh, options. I'm watching too much Gundam, but you can never watch too much Gundam. No, I wanted item number one. I guess I can just shoot them though. It's it's not like this is twin B or anything. Okay, that's a charge shot. I kind of like that in the sense that it lets me protect my front, but I don't like it so much. That wave beam isn't too bad. That actually covers quite a fair distance. I think so far the wave beam is the winner of best weapon in. Uh, in this one. I think four was the shield. I'm not sure you get power-ups by grabbing the same number twice. Doesn't look like it. Also, I don't like this gun. This reminds me of the uh, bolus shot from Vector Man. It's just slow and not very effective. The uh, presentation is alright, it's, it's not stellar or anything, but it works. What I prefer is the fact that this actually runs fairly quickly. I think it'd be fairly easy to make a shooter on the Game Gear run horribly slowly. But aside from a couple moments of slowdown, it's it's pretty smooth. All things considered. I mean, it's not the best shmup I've ever played by any means or measure. I mean, like I said, Musha exists. But it's still very, very fun. I'm enjoying this one a fair bit. We'll go with one more go of Power Strike, but so far, Power Strike is a big plus if you like compile shooters or shooters in general. Because I've always felt compile always just made for the excellent shooters. Aha, so you can upgrade your weapon by grabbing multiples of the same number. Okay, that's worth knowing. Unfortunately, shooting them off screen erases them, which is kind of a problem. It's not, uh, we're not running by twin B logic here, where you can actively... I really want to see what the powered up number four is. I want the better shield, but I'm not getting it. Alas, we're gonna have to keep our eyes up for number four before I die, which is probably going to be any moment now. But at least we kind of have a shield. Whoa! I do appreciate that the shield actually, like, erases shots. Unfortunately, there it goes. The music's not too bad. Okay. Ah, there it is. Still, fun, fun, fun. Next is Prince of Persia. It's one of those old cinematic platformers. I'm not super great with these, but uh, this is a fun one. What's interesting is this was a game that gave you a time limit to play. Like, you had to beat this game in 60 minutes, and if you failed, it was... You could theoretically beat the game, but you'd lose. It would send you kind of into a failure state, if I recall. There we go. That's my password. I have 60 minutes left. 
The animation's pretty fluid. I mean, in the original Prince of Persia, that was very much the case as well. Okay, now if I recall, you have to... Okay. Okay, now I need to take out my sword, which is... I don't know how to do that. That's a problem. Unless that was the... I don't know how to play this, evidently. Alright, there we go. Unless I died and got to... I don't understand what just happened. Like, I... Okay. So that's that. How do I... I know when we run into a fight, we need to take out our weapon. How do I do that? Okay, so yes, that was just me dying. I don't know how to grab our weapon. That's going to present issues. Okay, press one to continue. There we go. I don't know why it's making me go through like eight different menus that are all the exact same menu. Maybe I don't have the sword yet. I don't know. I, I've never been very good at the original Prince of Persia. I always preferred Sands of Time. Let's go this way. And uh, hopefully we'll make some form of progress. Okay, so that opens up and we don't want to fall in that pit, so we got to jump. Okay. And now I'm dead. <laughs> Welcome to Prince of Persia, the game where you die a whole bunch very easily because you're a very fragile person. Okay, let's go. Now I think you only get a password after completing a level, so we're probably not gonna see anyone. Whoops. Okay, well that we managed to survive a fall from. I was always more a fan of another world myself. Okay, so uh, which one's the jump button? I think it's A on this controller. Nope. I wish I could, you know, test out which button I need to press. Oh, it's up, isn't it? Okay, that's... Okay. This definitely feels like it was a game designed for more buttons than are currently available, which is two. But we'll try and make this work. Oh. Or not. <laughs> okay, we'll give it one more go. Okay, so that fell. Let's fall down here. And I just want to play Sands of Time, honestly. Although I think they reskinned this on the Xbox 360 to have like the Sands of Time characters in it, which is a little peculiar. Uh, especially considering that most versions of Sands of Time actually featured this game in it. Except for the HD versions, which again, kind of peculiar. Yeah, I'm not jumping. I don't know why I can't do that. Uh, for some reason it's not working with the up button. But, uh, Prince of Persia, that seems like a fairly, uh, accurate representation of it. I'm just not very good at it. And it could use more controller buttons than just two. Next we have Psycho Fox. Now, if you're familiar with the NES library, you might actually kind of be familiar with this game. This game was... I, I believe it was a sequel to this, or, or this was the sequel, but it was uh, related to Kid Cool. Which was not a very good game, honestly. But this is kind of like the version of Kid Cool on the SMS. And if you're familiar with Kid Cool, this is uh, fairly accurate to it. Now, what a lot of people don't know about Kid Cool, because I actually do know a little bit of Kid Cool trivia for what little that's worth, is that was actually based on a, uh, originally anyway, the original Kid Cool game in Japan was based on a uh, child actor. And then they just changed it to Kid Cool in North America, because it was just the age of when you did that, I guess. Because... People outside of Japan just never understood those wacky Japanese, I guess.
Now, if you've ever played Kid Cool, you'd also understand that this is fairly accurate to it in that it's ungodly difficult. <laughs> However, unlike Kid Cool, there does not appear to be a uh, timer, which is good. Because playing an almost unplayable game with a timer is hard. Also, we should have gotten that little uh, springy thing that was sticking out of the ground, because you can get unlimited lives that way. If the game follows the programming of Kid Cool, anyway. Well, yeah, but basically everything kills you in one hit, and there's... There's no way to save yourself, and the problem is everything is ungodly slippery. I'm, I'm not gonna say this is an excellent platformer, because it's really not. <laughs> It's more of an interesting curio than anything. Like, hey, did you ever want to see the Sega equivalent of an NES exclusive game based on a Japanese child actor? If so, you are a very strange person, but here you go. Go play Psycho Fox. Now, if we can... I don't know how to do it. Like, you have to get right up to the tippy top of this little springy thing. It's like a pole vault type of thing. And if you can do it, you can get unlimited lives. But we're clearly not doing that. And also, we don't have time for unlimited lives. We got stuff to do, right? So let's let's not deal with unlimited lives. Whoa! Also, I will point out, our fox has, like, no eyes. Okay, so a chicken leg just murdered us. That's how things are, I guess. The enemy designs kind of remind me a little bit of Clash of Demon Head. Except that was actually a really good game. Full of jank, no no less, but it was still a good game. This one isn't. Music's not too bad, and I do appreciate the amount of color in this game. I just wish it would actually play good. Which is, um, not a thing I'm seeing too much. Okay. Whoop! Oh. Well, that's okay, I guess. On to game four, R-Type. Oh, this is going to be a short episode if I've got to keep playing games I'm incredibly bad at. So this is R-Type. It's a game that, for the longest time, Irem didn't want to let you buy because they removed all their games digitally, and now they, I think, kind of brought a few of them back, but not many. Because... Irim just decided to pull out of the game making business and want to completely erase their digital footprint. And that's depressing because Irim made a lot of really cool things, including the best PS2 game of all time, Steambot Chronicles. Which was my third, fourth, my, my fourth or fifth review. Back when I couldn't have a video longer than 10 minutes, so I had to break it into two parts. <laughs> Go watch that review. I, I'm quite proud of that, even though it was a very early work, and I wish I could erase everything I've ever done. Because the moment I put it out, I immediately think, oh, that's bad. <laughs> but I'm just self-conscious like that. But I do quite like Steambot Chronicles. And if nothing else, I let people know that that game exists. Which is, in and of itself, something I'm rather proud of. Because that game needs more recognition. Even if you can't get it anymore. Which, seriously, there needs to be more Steambot Chronicle games. There's supposed to be another one. But, uh, alas... That game never came out. There was a sequel on the PSP that um, I've been told is not very good. I wouldn't know, I can't get it because like I said, I took down their entire digital footprint. And there was a Steambot Chronicles Blockus skin for some reason. Which is one of the stranger things I've heard. But uh, yeah, this is, this is basically just our type on the Game Gear. I'm not going to say this is the version of R-Type you need to play, but it is a version of R-Type you could play. And it's one that uh, Iron cannot have disappear off the face of the Earth because it already exists. And it only exists in physical. And my throat is sealing up, so I need some water. You know, the, the energy forming effect from that charge shot reminds me a lot of Battletoads on the Game Boy, which, you know, going back to the previous episodes, I am not good at Battletoads on the Game Boy, 
And that game gives me absolute nightmares, but I was stuck on the level with, uh, the shooter sections, which was level 2 for the longest time. Like, years. And then I beat it, and then I got completely curb stomped by, like, level 3. Okay, let's shoot some stuff. As my cat decides to make a whole bunch of noise in the background. I don't think having my option actually attached to my butt acts as any sort of shield and is basically worthless for it being there. But I'm not a master of our type or shooters in general. I'm more of a Thunder Force person, honestly. And even then, it's um, not great. Or rather, I'm not great. Thunder Force is excellent, though. I quite like Thunder Force. I'd like to get more Thunder Force games, but I only have the, the second one on the Genesis as well as the uh, weird Super Nintendo one. That was like a bad port of one that you could get on the arcade or Genesis, and it would be much better to do so. Poop. My cat is just so, so determined to make as much noise as possible. And you know, that's, that's the thing about cats. You can ask them to be quiet, and they'll make it seem like they understand. And then they'll just make a lot of noise to spite you, because that's just cats. I think this will continue from the start of the level, which... Oh, no, no, continue from here, so we'll continue. Oh. Okay. We got an M. Missiles! That's what M stands for. Cool. I'm not gonna lie, I have never actually played an R-Type game outside of this one. I really want to get R-Type Final on the PS2. I, I was gonna get a digital version, but again, that no longer exists. Thanks, Irem. I shouldn't be so bitter, but seriously, they deleted their entire digital library. That's so nonsense right there. Well, to be fair, that does go back to my whole complaint about digital purchases and how you're not really owning anything anymore. Uh, I, I don't like the way the landscape of selling games has sort of evolved or devolved as it is. You're just not allowed to have things that you pay for anymore, which feels very, very illegal, honestly. And yet here we are, in a world where that's very much what happens. But at least we can play the awesome multi-carts that have games on them. And we get to discover all sorts of new crazy stuff that we might not have otherwise tried, including stuff that's only available through stuff like this. And that's always a plus. That's part of why I love this sort of stuff. Like, it's definitely a different kind of experience in gaming. Like, yes, you could go out and buy every single game individually, and you probably get most of the same experience, but it's really a different thing on a multi-cart, honestly. Alright, well, we're, we're bad at our type. This episode's gonna be short, I apologize. We're going on to the final one, Rainbow Islands by Taito. This is the story of Bubble Bobble 2, not to be confused with Bubble Bobble 2, or the fact that there's a Bubble Bobble 3 and a story of Bubble Bobble 3, because that's not convoluted at all. But, um, this is one of those old Taito games that's just bullshit. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and explain this game as best I can. Um, big diamonds. So you need to collect big diamonds by collecting all the little diamonds in a level. And we're going to do that by... Dropping that on that guy. And then where he lands, that changes into one color of diamond. You need to pick up seven different colored diamonds that are completely denoted by where they land. And if you drop a rainbow on them. Like, the overarching goal is to get those diamonds. Because you can just get to the end by, like, just building up like this. But you won't actually be able to beat the game unless you actually get all the little diamonds to get the big diamonds. Which makes this kind of awkward, because of course, what you get out of the little diamonds is entirely dependent on how far the enemy chooses to fly to become a thing. Which is not fun at all. And if you thought that was bullshit, well, just you wait. Because it, it gets bullshittier, so to speak. Um, there's a boss that is entirely invisible unless you pick up a power-up in one level. That is fairly easy to miss from what I remember. So that's great. Uh, on the bright side, you can beat this game without having a second player installed. That's that's 
like the one godsend is this is actually designed to be playable by one person alone but uh, Taito come on make your make your arcade games not stupid <laughs> that would be great see we got Ain right there that's because that's supposed to each letter is supposed to correspond to a color of gem we got it's supposed to spell rainbow and if you spell rainbow that means you got all the rainbow gems so we got green, but we already had green, so we're not getting anything from that. Uh, something else I'd like to talk about here, if we may, is that I don't know if this is related at all to the way the NES port of this was handled, but the way the NES was handled was weird because the Famicom version used the music from the arcade version. Of course, it was downgraded, but uh, which used a rendition of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. You know, it makes sense, seeing as you're riding on rainbows and it's called Rainbow Islands. Well, the North American version, I guess, couldn't get the license to that, so they got a a song that shared bits of the melody, but not much. And this sounds honestly a little bit different from that version, but it's certainly not the original Rainbow Islands song, so this isn't even really a great part of it. Like I said with um, Bobble Bobble, my introduction to this was on the Sega Saturn Bubble Bobble Rainbow Islands collection, which has like the most unintentionally horrifying opening ever. And this is, uh, well, this version doesn't have that. That said, I think out of the two, growing up, I think I preferred Rainbow Islands to Bubble Bobble, because I found Bubble Bobble to be too hard, but I like both of them. I found this game to be more colorful, which is true, because, I mean, Bubble Bobble has nothing but just a black background, which is a little uninspiring. That said, uh, nowadays I think I like Bubble Bobble more, but that said, they're both kind of awkward and stupid in their own ways that make them really unpleasant games to play in some respects. They're still great, but if you want to actually, like, see the proper endings of these games, and you have to get through, like, some of the nonsense the programmers made, it's just, like, why would anyone make a game like this? And the reason is, of course, it's an arcade game. They're supposed to make it as hard as possible. But even when you win, you have to, like, jump through so many stupid hoops. And it sucks because, you know, if they took away that whole needing to have every single color of semi-randomized collectible, like, you can make them happen consistently. All you have to do is drop a rainbow on your opponent. But where your opponent decides to land after you've dropped that rainbow on them, that's kind of random. Also, I'm not sure if the, um... SMS version is supposed to have that kind of flicker. I'm inclined to say it probably does, though. But yeah. I mean, if you're not concerned with actually playing this game properly, you can just do this. Just build stairs to the end. And provided you don't take too long, and I mean, this is a pretty fast way to go. You can beat the game pretty consistently without too much of a problem. I mean, it does get harder, obviously, but... Most of the difficulty from this game just comes from the fact that it was designed by people who hated you. Oh, hey, we actually got a different color. There is an item that lets you uh, turn everything into diamonds as well, but it's kind of somewhat randomized. Okay, let's do another. Go, 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 go. Come on, Bobby. Where are you, Bobby? I can't remember, and I don't really care. I never understood why Taito, with the Bubble Bobble series, decided every game needs to be, like, a number in the Bubble Bobble, like, Odyssey, but then also has to have, like, a different game to explain the story that explains nothing, but is legally distinct from the game that shares the exact same number. Like, okay, there's Bubble Bobble, then there's the story of Bubble Bobble, and then there's Bubble Bobble 2, and the story of Bubble Bobble 2, and they have nothing to do with each other, but they're somehow connected. Uh, Bubble Bobble's a weird, weird license. Anyway, this has been another episode of I Can Definitely Count to Five Properly. I mean, if you watch my, my game loop, my uh, game uh, collection videos, I, I, you can tell I have trouble alphabetizing unintentionally but I can numbers properly sometimes when it's not 6 a.m. Uh, anyway, based on these past five, would I recommend the game? Well, Power Strike alone is pretty kick-ass. 
Prince of Persia is a faithful rendition, but you can get better versions pretty much anywhere. Uh, Psycho Fox is honestly just kind of unpleasant. R-Type seems like a faithful rendition as well, but I'm not very good at it. And Rainbow Islands is okay, but I would say just go get the Japanese Famicom version if you want like the best version of this without like something that's technically a proper arcade port. Still, based on these past five, I would say yes, because Power Strike's just that good. Prince of Persia's a fundamentally very good game, I'm just bad at it, though the controls on this aren't stellar. And you know, R-Type and Rainbow Islands are good enough, I guess, but there are better versions of each. Still, the only one that I would say is one to take away from this is Psycho Fox. That said, I hope you enjoyed, and join us next time when we take a look at Rampage. I know what this game is. It's not a game I'm terribly fond of, and I can't imagine it playing terribly well, but, uh... Actually, I'm kind of impressed with this title screen already, so we've got that to look forward to. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, subscribe to the show to see more, because we're doing this every single week. You might as well check out and follow and possibly subscribe to my Twitch channel to see me stream every single day. I actually did have to take a, day, a, a break today because of some uh, family issues, but hopefully I'll be back there tomorrow with more Animal Crossing and other stuff. And if you really want to make my day, check out the show's PayPal or Patreon. Support the show any way you can so that I can continue to do what I do to the best of my ability, which is take a look at some decent games on this thing and Psycho Fox. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, Internet.